Hey guys, Dr. Polly. Uh, we're going to go ahead and knock out exercise three. Now, on exercise three, as you can see, um, it's a cylindrical object, and so because it's a cylindrical object, we're going to do what's called a revolve. And a revolve takes a shape, and it literally revolves it around however many degrees you ask it to around a what's considered a center line or an axis. Um, if you were to saw this object in half right through here and flip it around, it would be, and let's ignore this the rectangle here, the shape would look like an L right here if you follow my mouse. And that's the shape we're going to draw. And then we're going to draw that shape and I'm going to rotate it around this lower half so it'll be solid. And what we'll get is the uh, two primary circles here. And then we'll come in and we'll add the uh, hole here, the square hole, and then we'll add the knobs and then we'll add the threads, um, the tap holes to those knobs. So that's our plan of action. So the first thing I'm going to do is say I'm going to do a revolve. And because I'm going to do a revolve, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to draw it from the right plane. So when it's revolved, the front will look just like this. Okay. So right plane, and I'm going to draw that L. Now, the outside diameter of this drawing, oops, I messed up real quick. Uh, it is a metric drawing, so I need to switch over to metric millimeters, uh, gram second. Luckily, I didn't dimension anything before I did that, so I'll go back and edit sketch, and let's go ahead and add those dimensions. So, um, the diameter of the circle is 150, and since I'm going from the center up, it's going to be 75, which is the radius. The inside circle has a diameter of 80, so I'm using 40. Uh, the width is 50 millimeters, and this section right here is 25 millimeters out of that 50. So as you can see, it's all finished here. I'm going to go ahead and exit, um, highlight my sketch, tell it to revolve. Uh, now it says, what's my axis of revolution? I'm going to pick this bottom line, and it, notice that it revolves that shape around that line. I hit finish, and there's the basic basis of it right there. Um, let's go ahead and add our knobs on. Um, I'm going to do this with an extrude, so I'm going to click um, that surface uh, where those knobs will come out of. I have to position it, so what I'll do is, is I'll get myself a construction line. Um, two construction lines. Set it at 45 degrees. Now on this line somewhere is where that hole is going to be located. If you look right here on that line, uh, this hole is going to be located. Um, but where on that line? Um, if you look at this pattern circle right here, it's 115 diameter. That means from the center to either one of these is half that distance. And if you go from this one through the center to this one, it's 115 millimeters. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle on the line, and then I'm going to dimension from here to here, 115 divided by 2. All right, so I'm just going to create a circle on this line. It you notice it doesn't really matter as long as I don't snap it to that midpoint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dimension that circle. It's got a diameter of 20. And then I'm going to dimension from the center to this center. And this is called an aligned dimension. Okay? An aligned dimension goes along with the... Uh, line. This is vertical, this is horizontal, those won't suit my purposes. I need to go aligned. So I'll go ahead and click that and it's going to be 115 divided by 2 because I don't want to do the math. And there you go. There's that circle. Now these construction lines will not get in your way. Um, the only time construction lines kind of get in your way sometimes is when you do trims and stuff like that. But for right now, uh, they're perfectly fine where they are. So I'm going to finish that sketch, and the knob is 15, and there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create the full knob, and then I'm going to do a, a circle pattern with it. I'll show you guys how to do circle patterns. And our circle pattern is going to be in feature mode. So now the next thing I need to do is put that tapped hole in there. So I'm going to say hole wizard, and since it's metric, I'm going to go to ANSI metric. It's a tapped hole. 
It is a standard tapped hole. And it is a M12, which is a metric 12, with a 1.5 pitch. So I'm going to scroll down here. There is metric 12 with 1.5 pitch. And it said use default depth settings, so leave these as blind. Make sure that the countersink is not selected. And now I'm going to go to positions. I'm going to select this surface because that's where the hole's going to show up. And I'm going to hover over that circle until that center pops up because these share the same center. Uh, they're centered on each other. So I'm just going to snap to that, click, and then I'll say OK. And now I have that hole. Now, I don't want to do that four more, I mean three more times. That's kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to here in feature mode because we're not dealing in a sketch. We are not inside of a sketch, so we're dealing with features. I'm going to say uh, under linear pattern, I'm going to select circular pattern. Now, one of the first things you want to do with this is pick your direction. And all direction says is that uh, you select something that you're going to rotate around its center. And so I'm going to pick uh, this outside, and you notice it selects the center here. I want 360 degrees equal spacing. I want four of them. And the features that I'm going to uh, pattern, I'm going to go over here to this little drop down, and I will select the tap hole and the boss extrude. Make sure they're selected, uh, and they show up here. And then, um, if you look, there's the preview for it. You can see that I've got everything I want. I'll say OK. And there are the patterned features. Now the next thing I want to do is add this fillet. This fillet here is uh, 2.5 typical. And if you look, this outside edge, this inside edge, and these edges around these knobs are all filleted. Well, there's a quick and easy way to do that. If you just go here in feature mode to fill it, Type in my uh, radius, which is 2.5. And then I'm going to pick, make sure it's a uh, constant size fillet and symmetric. And then I'm going to pick this face here. I'm not going to pick the edges. I could, but if I pick this face, you notice what highlights every edge on that face, which just happens to be every uh, edge that I need to fill it. So I'm just going to pick the, the face, and you notice that it'll show me what all is going to fill it. And I'm going to say OK. And there's that. The only thing I have left is an extruded cut in the center. And since I centered this around the origin, I can just use a center rectangle, snap to the center, and dimension this by uh, 45 by 45. And there we go. And I'm going to finish. And I'm going to extrude that. And I'm going to say up to next which is the next surface here, and say OK. And there is the finished part, exercise three. Um, before we leave, we notice that it uh, does say it's copper. So to change the material right here in your browser, um, it says material not specified. Right-click on that and say edit the material. It's copper, so copper is a element all to itself. So there's copper. Say apply and close that out, and you can see that it has changed into copper. All right, uh, let's go ahead and save it, and we're done.